This Week in AI. OpenAI isn't so open. After all, after we learned about a security breach a year ago that was never reported. But what we're really going to focus on is the risk of security breaches to AI companies because of China, as most of the main updates this week weirdly touched China a lot. We'll also briefly talk about NATO's revised AI strategy and my two favorite AI apps that were launched. Let's get into it. This week, Anonymous insiders revealed to the New York Times that OpenAI had a data breach in April 2023, but the company kept it secret because allegedly no customer or partner info was stolen and their AI infrastructure backed by Microsoft wasn't penetrated. OpenAI's executives didn't see it as a national security threat since they believed the hacker was just a private individual with no ties to a foreign government. So they decided not to inform the FBI or law enforcement of the breach. Some OpenAI employees didn't agree and were worried of OpenAI's increased risk of foreign adversaries, like China, stealing AI technology and endangering US security. And concerns about China's hackers aren't unfounded because a few weeks ago, Microsoft's president testified on the Hill that a hacker group linked to the Chinese government used their infrastructure to attack federal government networks called Storm 0558. They hacked Microsoft's email systems in May and June of 2023 and stole over 60,000 emails from the State Department's network, accessing accounts of 22 organizations and over 500 people, including the Commerce Secretary and the U.S. ambassador to China. Now, here's how it all comes full circle. OpenAI officially left the Chinese market this week and with businesses in China now scrambling for alternatives, they actually might not need to worry. Why? Because Microsoft confirmed also this week that there's a loophole allowing Chinese entities access to OpenAI models through its Azure Cloud service. That was a lot of facts about China in just a few minutes, so here's that 30 second wrap of what I said linking everything together. This week it was confirmed that OpenAI had data breach in April 2023, which they didn't report to the FBI because executives thought the hacker acted alone and didn't access their Microsoft backed models. But only a month later, Microsoft faced a major Chinese espionage attack on US government entities, and despite the growing concern of Chinese security breaches like both of these events, Microsoft confirmed they will use a loophole to continue offering OpenAI services to Chinese entities, even though OpenAI officially left the Chinese market a few days ago. My initial thoughts, I honestly was completely lost trying to figure out this week's news at first because China was mentioned in a higher frequency than normal in a lot of different places and they didn't seem connected at all, but then it clicked for me. And maybe I'm making a link where it doesn't belong because no one else seems to be, including the news outlets, but it seems like too much of a coincidence to ignore. OpenAI's data breach was April 2023, then there was an actual espionage attack using Microsoft's infrastructure, which OpenAI is a strong partner with, in May of 2023, and here we are, finding about all of this a year later, this week of all weeks, with increased concerns about the Chinese government penetrating our AI infrastructure, to the point that OpenAI removes it from the Chinese marketplace a few days ago. And despite all of these red flags, Microsoft still chooses to utilize a loophole through the Azure OpenAI service to give Chinese entities access to OpenAI, even though they were hacked by them. This is all crazy. I honestly cannot comprehend it. As for the rest, OpenAI absolutely should have reported it to the FBI. I didn't realize boardroom executives were able to conduct those sort of government investigations. And because OpenAI doesn't really actually seem that open, can we even believe that only internal communication apps, like they said, were compromised? Can we actually believe that our data wasn't? China is catching up fast. They have half the world's leading AI researchers and building AI that's nearly as powerful as the leading US systems. So we're discussing China's threat, not only due to the relevance of the news this week, but because it's absolutely real, it's already happened and call me crazy, but I don't think we can rule out that these breaches aren't related. Next, NATO unveiled its revised AI strategy on July 10th that aims to accelerate the implementation of AI within the Alliance in a safe and responsible way. This updated plan builds on the 2021 strategy launched pre-ChatGPT, now incorporating recent advancements like generative AI. 
While the full strategy plan was not released, a statement highlighted enhancing interoperability between AI systems across member nations, so connecting AI infrastructure to each other and overall expanding NATO's AI ecosystem. A significant advancement to the 2024 strategy is the recognition of AI-enabled disinformation within political climates, but despite the risk, NATO states it's critical they leverage Gen AI to maintain a strategic edge. Inspired by ongoing AI military efforts in the U.S., including the DoD's Task Force Lima, the CIA's offline LLM that can be queried by ChatGPT for information, and the Air Force's GPT tool, NATO is committed to adopting these technologies swiftly to ensuring it remains at the forefront of AI advancements. My initial thoughts, it's not surprising that NATO has updated its AI strategy given the long-standing military use of AI. I was personally working with AI with the DoD and the Army in 2019, and they've used it way longer than that. So don't be shocked by NATO's desire to use more AI in, in military purposes. What is concerning is the emphasis on interoperability among AI systems across NATO states. It suggests a move towards potentially integrating into a unified AI intelligence network among member nations. And while this could enhance coordination and efficiency within NATO, what about data security, sovereignty, and the broader implications that that would have for international relations in the AI era? You know, just some small things. Lastly, here are my two favorite AI application updates. At their summit in New York this week, AWS launched App Studio, which allows non-developers to allegedly build full software applications with prompts in minutes instead of hiring an entire development team. The example they gave is that if you need to build an app to track inventory, you can describe your needs to App Studio and it will generate the app for you with a user interface, data model, and a routing system. It even creates mock data so you can see how it works without worrying about impacting the underlying code. Deployment, operations, and maintenance are also handled in App Studio, ensuring your application is secured and scalable. And the second is that Anthropics Cloud has introduced a new feature called the Prompt Playground to help improve AI applications and their output quicker. Language models can be super tricky as there's not a known methodology of how to optimize the output yet, and small changes in how you word a prompt can lead to huge differences in results. So instead of wasting significant time fighting that battle, this new feature by Anthropic provides quick feedback to help you optimize those prompts. Located under the Evaluate tab in Anthropic Console, which is the, the testing workspace for developers, Evaluate is making it easier to find and implement prompt improvements. My initial thoughts, not much to say about Anthropic's prompt playground. It's just super helpful and super cool. I wish I had that a year ago, but the AWS App Studio, well, it sounds amazing, but being in software all of these years and knowing the output quality of Gen AI code generators, yeah, I don't see it working very well. Maybe like a single page app that you will use for like a month period, but the code's functionality at the onset aside, the maintenance of software systems is a completely different beast than just building the starting code. Hosting can add a lot of money. And what if you want to change something about the app that was created? I just don't, I don't see this working right now. I see it as a great step one, but nothing that is super viable yet. And that's it for this week. Just a reminder of a few things. If you want to understand how your data is being used by the major AI systems, I am hosting an AI data privacy seminar. Link is in the description to register. And I just started an Instagram a few days ago. I have a whole 14 followers. I know it's going to be so big. So if you're one of the almost a thousand people that have joined me so far on YouTube in just these last three months, I'm so grateful for you. Please go follow me over there too if you can. You'll get a lot more of my random AI thoughts that are constantly plaguing my mind on a daily basis. Bye.